The next couple of days across the state of Florida are going to be wet and stormy. We're going to break that all down coming up through this video. What's going on, guys? I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kagus. The rain is likely going to focus itself into south and central Florida. And then we're going to be watching off our coast for the weekend, a likely coastal low developing that is partially highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. And then, of course, we are going to break down the north Florida forecast through central and south Florida in terms of the numbers and your rain chances as well. So stick around for that. We are going to start with the water vapor imagery. Before we break this video down further, if you want to stay updated on all things Florida weather, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so stationary front is draped across south and central Florida. This is going to be the trigger mechanism, if you will, for these rounds of rain and thunderstorms that will really start to ramp up throughout the course of your Wednesday afternoon and especially Wednesday evening in South and Central Florida. This is also going to be the focal point for a coastal low that is already trying to get going out here. And again, it's highlighted by the Hurricane Center. We're going to get all into that in just a little bit. But nonetheless, we are focused in the short term on that stationary front that is going to be the pathway and the reason for these increased rain chances. Just look at this. Four o'clock on Wednesday, you see all the thunderstorm activity through the Florida Peninsula out into the Gulf of Mexico, out into the Southwest Atlantic as well. Watch what happens is increase, uh, the activity increases, the rainfall increases through your Wednesday evening. Here is 7 o'clock, and again, a stormy ride home if you're planning on doing something this evening. Indoor projects tonight, if you're planning on cutting the grass through Central Florida especially it's going to be a no-go for you. Again, there's going to be a lot of rain around. Different story through North Florida, though. We are still under the influence of some of that drier air behind the front that came through. South Florida, we're more of that scattered variety where there's going to be those hit-or-miss thunderstorms. Watch what happens as we get into Thursday morning. We could have a few stray thunderstorms around Jacksonville through Daytona Beach, a few storms out in the Gulf. This is the makings of that coastal system. You'll see that little curl as we move forward in time. There's 2 o'clock on your Thursday afternoon. A lot of Florida is dry. Then with the heating of the day, we start to spark things back up again as we move into Thursday. I do think as we get into Friday and into the weekend behind our coastal system, which is now right about there, this is moving away from us, by the way. It could take on some tropical characteristics, but regardless, this is going to be a non-issue for Florida in terms of rainfall. It will mess with our beaches. Again, we're going to break that down in just a little bit, but nonetheless, I do think drier air comes in behind that system and helps us to dry out for the second part of Thursday and into Friday, and maybe even for part of your weekend as well. So we're going to get the rain out of the way, I think, at least on a widespread scale, uh, tonight being Wednesday, and then into Thursday, the first half. So here we go, closer look at Central Florida, where the bulk of the rain is going to fall. And then this is what I'm talking about. If you do have evening outdoor plans, again, it's going to be very dicey, to say the least. You see the darker reds and purples, even some embedded strong thunderstorms possible from Orlando to Simi Point Siena, into Bushnell, uh, into Coleman, into Eustace, into Mineola, Claremont. A lot of rain around. Same deal for us, even where it's lighter in the Palm Coast, Daytona Beach. Just because it's not showing rain at that location at that time doesn't mean it's not going to rain. Again, models are just guidance, not gospel. And then you see that flare-up continue late into Wednesday evening. So it's not going to be kind of just one push and done. It is going to be a continuation through a lot of your Wednesday evening. Most of Central Florida then going to wake up dry Thursday evening, but then you see it there. We fill things back in early Thursday afternoon, which will help keep temperatures again at bay, mainly into the middle 80s once again. So there is your quote-unquote cooler days coming as well as helped by the enhanced rainfall. I think we start to dry things out though Thursday into Friday as some drier air starts to filter back in behind that developing coastal low which again, we'll take a look at in just one second. If you're interested in that, you can scrub across and look at the time codes that are in the description if you're focused on the tropics, which we're going to talk about at the end of this video as well. There's a lot to unpack in the Florida forecast today. So here we go. A lot of rain is coming in our direction. It might help out your lawn a little bit. We always watch out for poor drainage areas in a situation like this, but really through Thursday, we could pick up at least one to three inches, really from a central Florida standpoint, kind of right in through here. There's no doubt going to be the potential for isolated four or five inches of rain right on through smack dab the I-4 corridor, even some isolated pockets where you see just a tenth of an inch in, uh, of rain in Miami. There's going to be higher amounts, say, towards West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale. You see these higher darker colors that show up there in between the official site where that model forecast is run. But nonetheless, some heavy rain coming to south 
and especially Central Florida over the next couple of days. And that is courtesy, again, of that stationary front. The cold front that came down got hung up, and that front is also going to be the focal point for a developing coastal low as we move into the next couple of days, really Friday into the weekend. We're going to get all into that and what that means for us in just one second. But first, I want to give you the pinpoint Florida forecast. Again, rain chances low through the panhandle. This is forecasting out for tomorrow. Now, of course, it is going to be a rainy evening for a lot of central and south Florida, Panama City tomorrow. It's a 20% shot for rain, for rain, but get closer to the coast and further south and east. You see our rain chances spike towards Gainesville and into St. Augustine, 40 to 60 percent shot for rain so those rain chances going to continue to remain elevated for us uh, across the eastern flank of North Florida as well. 60% shot for storms tomorrow. That's Thursday, uh, September 21st. Cape Canaveral, same for us, Vero Beach. Our rain chances remain elevated pretty much if you're in central or south Florida. There is a very good bet that you're going to see at least a little bit of rain as we continue to keep things unsettled with that front nearby and that developing coastal low coming into fruition. Okeechobee, 70% shot for rain on Thursday. 70% shot for all us in Miami as well. Fort Myers will have a 60% chance. Again, those storm chances remain elevated. So I mentioned that the Hurricane Center kind of has it highlighted. Well, I guess they do have it highlighted. It kind of has a chance to become subtropical. It's going to develop regardless it's at least going to be a non-tropical coastal low, as we call it. We can already start to see the makings of it here. Some thunderstorms trying to get organized here. This is going to have a well-defined center, so to speak. It's one of the things we look at if this is going to take on a name. The issue is it's likely going to have fronts attached to it. It's all going to be semantics, though, and meteorology for our friends in the Carolinas, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. This is going to be bring tropical storm-esque conditions even though meteorologically it's not going to be a tropical storm, so to speak. But for us, it's going to move away from Florida. It will bring rough beach conditions again for especially Friday, even into Saturday. I think we'll start to see things settle down, but six to nine foot waves are going to be likely as we get into Friday and Saturday off the Atlantic coast of Florida. So there we go. Heavy rain moving up and away from Florida. And this is what I was talking about before. Our area of low pressure is right here. On the back end of this, this is going to bring down some drier air. So as it kind of soaks the Carolinas and into the Northeast, look at this Saturday afternoon. I'll, I'll move the camera back down to the Florida view in just one second. But you see all the heavy rain sliding up the eastern seaboard. Look at Central Florida on Saturday. If you've been putting off cutting the grass and trying to do it this evening or over the next couple of evenings, really Friday night, I think you're good throughout a lot of the state of Florida and then certainly over the weekend as well we're going to dry things out so it's a pretty nice weekend shaping up but it's going to be ugly up the east coast because of that system regardless of if it gets a name or not and it may subtropical storms do get named it's likely not going to be fully tropical because there are fronts attached to it it would need to break free from its fronts and it probably does not have enough time to do that. Regardless, impacts are going to be the same for our friends in the Carolinas. So here we go with those increasing wave heights. The green represents six to nine foot waves. You see it there, especially off of Jacksonville through Daytona Beach to off of Cape Canaveral. Really from Fort Pierce South, you saw that little flare up of green towards West Palm as well. That would be through the day on Saturday. The wave heights do back off very quickly as we move into Sunday. That's 3 o'clock in the morning. And then things are much, much better by Sunday afternoon. In terms of the wave height, though, the rip current risk is likely going to stay very high, not only through the end of this work week, but as we get into as we get into uh, the rest of the weekend as well. So here we go with the tropical update, and there's a lot going on here as well. Here's Nigel. Again, that is no threat. There's that system we just broke down. That is a very big circle that just popped up on your screen. And then we are going to watch this guy. It's not an invest just yet. It will likely become that soon. Once these roll over water and the Hurricane Center deems it an area of investigation, we start to get our hurricane models run on this. There's a couple of things that we're going to watch with this, and there's... As it moves across the Atlantic, it's coming off low, so that's the first thing we always watch for when these things emerge off of Africa at a low latitude here. It has a better chance to make its way across the main development region and then potentially impact land here, maybe get into the Caribbean. It's one of the things we are going to watch, and I'll show you a model forecast on this in just one second. Nonetheless, the other thing we're going to watch is the Bermuda High here. Again, it's all unpacked in the model, but what I want to show you with a satellite representation of this is that not only do we have our little system here that where the x marks the spot but there's this little flare up of thunderstorms right here 
the general rule is is that if a storm stays weak for longer, it's not going to feel the tug of the main steering things. Once the storm, once the thunderstorms get taller, they are start to started to be influenced by the upper level systems. So if they are lower, they kind of sneak below those upper level steering currents. So as we are looking at these here, if these two are likely going to interact over the next couple of days, when you have interaction between two systems like this, there's likely competing centers involved and when centers compete it takes a while for one to become the dominant center so it's going to add uncertainty into our computer forecast for one but it's also going to take a, a little bit longer for these things to develop and the longer they take to develop the better shot they have to come west so here's what i want to show you and modeled here is the low level spin this is the european model that's what i'm going to use this time around but there is our system there it's already big and broad but here is that other little piece out ahead of it that i mentioned here and notice it takes a little bit of time so here is september 23rd we still have this very elongated area of low pressure with likely at least two competing centers and it's not really until we get into the 25th of september five or six days from now that it starts to become a little more organized but still it's an open wave there may be a little bit of a circulation right down in here at least according to the european model but nonetheless it's still very weak at this time Meanwhile, we do have that area of high pressure that kind of encompasses this area here. We've kind of looked at this over the last couple of days, and it showed that it, there wanted to be a weakness here. But the model trend has shown that there may not be a weakness. So not only do we have a stronger modeled area of high pressure to help guide this thing west, there's also a weaker system to not take advantage of any kind of weakness that there might be in that ridge to go up and out. So this is one of the reasons why we watch. Now, on the western edge of that already as we get towards the September 27th, so this is still, again, seven to eight days away. We just want to be paying close attention here in the Northeast Caribbean. This is still something that is very weak, at least on the model. So I want to be clear about that. This could be beneficial for the Caribbean islands that have been very dry and very hot if it doesn't get too strong. But then you see it kind of lift up. We'd be watching this guy here. This is another area of high pressure. You kind of see the, the wind flow here. If it didn't go up and out, then it'd be something that we would have to watch. That's as far as the model goes out here. This is 10 days out now. So again, you're trying to pick out little pieces in the steering flow 7 to 10 days out it's pretty much impossible because one little change that happens right now, it's the butterfly effect, gets amplified that far into the future. So we just have to watch to see where that guy is, how that plays out, and then where the system itself consolidates. So there's a lot to play here. Again, I'm still cautiously optimistic for the United States anyway, as these fronts become more prevalent off of the United States, as we get deeper into the year, it gets harder for these African storms to connect all the way to the U.S. because more likely than not, a front will be there to meet it and steer it away. We'll see what happens. It doesn't always happen, of course, but we're going to have to watch it closely. Again, just kind of keep it into the back of your mind. But again, the euro wants to kind of flip it out, although not as aggressive if you've been watching our videos as it has been. And this is what we have to watch, the trend here in the models. So we're going to keep an eye on that as well. I'll show you quickly if you want to see this. This is the ensembles. This is on tropicaltidbits.com. And this little cluster here, this is the European ensembles, is all those numbers represent where it thinks the center of low pressure will be at that time. And I'll take this further out. And you do see a few members get it into the Northeast Caribbean, but most still want to curve it away. But even on the ensembles, look at this, all the blue numbers that pop up, that's high pressure. Here is the weakness. So here is high pressure number one that's kind of push it west. Here is high pressure number two. We want it to be strong enough that it goes up and out in between. It's kind of like a running back. I made this analogy before. It wants to find the kind of opening between the two blocking between the, the tackles, between the offensive tackles. It needs to get in there. So these are the tackles right here that block. It needs to find the running lane to get up and out. If this one, if this high pressure is building over here, then it has a higher shot to go to the west. A lot to watch. It's 7 to 10 days out. We have our eyes on it. We'll continue to have that conversation with you right here. 
If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up as I rambled on about all these ensembles. But this is the meteorology of it, and this is what I hope to have the conversation. The meteorology and the science, that's what I love about it. We love when these things go out, but going to break that stuff down for you as we get deeper. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you do want to stay updated on the rest of hurricane season and, of course, Florida winter, and it could be a rockin' Florida winter in terms of thunderstorms and maybe a lot of rain as well, you have to hit subscribe. Check out the Florida winter forecast, by the way. I'll put that in the description. Please consider doing so, and we will catch you next time.